Welcome to Hassle-Free Hosting with AirDXB, the podcast where we explore the world of short-term rentals in Dubai and beyond. Yeah, we can. A bit more energy as well. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Greg here from Hassle-Free Hosting with AirDXB, and I'm joined by Leanne Lewis. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Now, we're going to do something a bit fun. We're going to turn the tables on me. Uh, you are going to ask me lots and lots of questions about what I've done, how AirDXB came about, what we do on a day-to-day basis, anything that you want to ask that you feel anyone listening to this would find beneficial. So I've obviously had you in here and I've asked you numerous questions. Tables have turned. So what do you want to ask me? Okay. Yeah, it's quite nice to have you in the hot seat. So I love the hot seat. <laughs> instead of you bullying everyone with the questions, oh, uh, let's try and put you on the spot. Um, I think people would like to know why air dxb like short letters why short lets um you obviously worked in real estate for a while why did you I'm sure. go yeah why did you go uh, down yeah. that model it's really interesting so i've been in real estate since 2000 worked in the uk moved over to dubai 13 years ago 14 years ago having visited my brother that lived here loved it love everything real estate Worked uh, uh, with, uh, with several firms. I was working for a very large corporate global firm. And this was back, uh, we're talking six years ago now. So we're talking 2018 that I formed the company. So the market was actually in free fall, which no one talks about since 2016. Prices dropping year on year, give or take five, six, seven, eight percent. And definitely not the market that we're seeing now. And I um, woke up one morning, as you do, and I thought, you know, there's a business here. Having set up two holiday homes companies for uh, uh, a company back in Dubai, uh, back in England, beg your pardon, which was just a normal brokerage, but my boss asked me to set up this holiday homes companies on his behalf. Did one for one, he sold it, made money, and asked me to do it again for him. But there you go. Um, so I've done it before, but hadn't done it in a while. Fast forward being in Dubai and then waking up, as I just said, I connected the dots. I knew what holiday homes was about having done it before. We were in a market with an abundance of stock because prices were dropping. There weren't as many buyers. Uh, Airbnb and other booking platforms were becoming a thing, but definitely not recognized within the region. And then last but not least, uh, it was legalized in Dubai. Holiday homes was legalized back in 2016. So connect those dots. You've got an abundance of stock. It's legalized. Platforms are beginning to be known, and the absolute cherry on the top was Dubai was the fourth most visited city on the planet at that time. So again, you had an abundance of tourists. Connect those dots and away you go. So it was an incredibly tough time because holiday homes, short lets was not a thing in Dubai. So although some people would say we didn't have much competition, I said, well, trust me, the competition with the homeowners, they didn't know what it was. Why would you come and put your property on a short let platform and get money per booking? rather than take one check up front for an entire year. Yeah. So it came about for those reasons in a business sense, but then also came about because I was fed up of working for somebody else. I believe that the way I thought there was something there. I didn't know if I was right, but I wanted to test myself and push myself to see if in my own environment, making my own decisions, my own choices, that I could produce or make something. And lo and behold, we now have ADXB. Um, and freedom was a big thing in general i was going to say was it something to do with you not wanting anyone to tell you what to do yes <laughs> it was very much so um I, I i watched a wonderful thing where someone uses the dreaded e-word which i think is vastly overused entrepreneur is the word is that they said uh the the entrepreneurs um are very hard to tell what to do I've never heard orders. you call yourself an entrepreneur. Though. I haven't. Ever. I'm, I'm just commenting on what entrepreneurs no, are. No, this is what I say. I'm not yeah. one. I hate <laughs> well, you that are. word. Uh, um, is that they, they're not very good at taking orders. They're not very good at um, following orders, basically. And uh, for me, having a meeting about a meeting, filling out abundance of paperwork, making sure you know that you were playing a, a tactical game inside the office rather than going and doing your job, I was spending more time filling out paperwork, having a meeting about a meeting, or you know, playing the social, or pl- trying to, uh, trying to, sorry, climb the social ladder within that working environment or professional ladder. So, no, I just want to work. I just want to go and do my job. I want to see if something can be created out of nothing and push yourself, rather than either being told what to do or having your wings clipped. And that was a big thing. You were told what to do. You were, you weren't told to think outside the box. You were told to only stay in the box, do what you were told, and we believe that will then produce the end result. That's not for me. For me, it was think outside the box, push hard, 
grow those wings and see where it takes you. Exactly. And now we've got Air XB, 200 employees, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties, four businesses, and we've just gone global into the UK. So, Well, we finished any of you tell me everything like that. No, I'm joking. So <laughs> I want to go all the way. I want to touch on all those things, but I want to go all the way back to the beginning. So you set up Air DXB because you had that experience on short term in England. Yes. So start from that bit. How different is England to Dubai setting up a short term company in terms of the types of property, the laws, the regulations? Obviously, we could be here for days if you're telling us everything, but how did they, how were they different? And also from your experience in England, as I'm guessing a lot younger, how did that come into your Dubai? Yeah, I was 19 and 22 when I set these companies up. Young. Um, two very different times. Uh, my staff still laugh at me now when I talk about fax machines. We were using fax machines. You could only check into a property by collecting the keys from our office between the hours of three and five on a Saturday. That's it. No self-check-in. <laughs> Uh, booking platforms like Airbnb didn't exist. You didn't have what you have now. So to say how different was it, it's not how different, they were completely different. Yeah. So this holiday homes industry or short let industry, where I was in the UK, it was more holiday homes than anything. It was word of mouth and it was people, uh, it was advertising on your own website and was advertising in newspapers, yeah. um, which I think is great. And I miss those days sending out uh, leaflets about... Um, properties that we have on via the post remember post boxes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> whereas now you're dealing with an incredibly aggressive fast-paced market it's exploded you've got a hundred billion dollar valued company by the name of airbnb that's now ruling that market globally it's turned into a business um for many people whether they're subleasing whether it's people like me that set up a management company whether it's people buying property to short let themselves it's become a fundamental part of the real estate real estate spectrum which is what it's now in now i've had the experience to work in multi-disciplines so i've worked within commercial i've worked within residential my main um training uh and experience lies in selling prime super prime so very expensive properties million two three four up to 20 30 40 million us dollars um is that this sits within that real estate parameter now and what i will say is far harder than any of the others because there are yeah. so many moving parts so Bring it back to the question you've just asked. How are they different? They are so different, it's hard to even start. In the UK, it's still a grey area. There are some rules and regulations. There's one that's come in very recently uh, where you can only let your property for a certain period of time, but now, now you need licensing. If we rewind it back to when I got into this, which is now over 20 years ago, it's uh, or about 20 years ago, it's a completely different situation. Um, if we though compare the two, UK to Dubai, Dubai is more heavily regulated. That's a good thing. You yeah. know where you stand. You know what you should be doing. There's no room for error. You know that this is what should be done at this point in time. Get that done and away you go. And it's great that you, we're living in a city or a country that's embraced it. When you start talking about Europe, even Americas and things, uh, countries like that, they're not. But that's due to a huge housing shortage because, yeah. of course, property comes off that people who are permanent residents want to stay in prices therefore go up it outprices those residents in dubai where there's an abundance of stock what now well there is um because of course the market has changed here recently yes there is enough stock but we're on that edge but they're building at such a high pace yeah this market is very very different so from my perspective it, you could argue it both ways you could say you've got more regulation here that you need to adhere to which means i've got to put more manpower more money into getting that right but it's a good thing because you know where you stand. Whereas in the UK, because it's so large and it's more of a grey area, you can do more yeah. without somebody. But at least by being in Dubai, you know that you've got somebody there telling you what to do or at least, you know, respect Yeah, the like laws. guidance as such. Guidance, exactly that. Do this and then get on with it, which is exactly what we want. And that's why Dubai is so good. They want everyone to be prosperous here. They do. <laughs> ah, they do. Unlike the UK where it's, uh, you know, there's no's, no's, no's. Dubai will say, yes, just follow follow this and get on with it. And then, you know, create something out of nothing. And there we go. We just got on with it and that's what happens. So it's a wonderful thing, I think, having this regulation. Um, we do know that Dubai, a lot of uh, its income in general is built off tourism. They want to get it right. They need to get it right. And I welcome those sorts of uh, regulations for sure. Yeah. And then that was born Air DXB. Yeah, and that was Air DXB. So why did you name the company Air DXB? And did you ever have any other names to call it? I actually don't really don't know the answer to this. I don't either. I don't think there was. <laughs> I think that was the name I just decided on. I just went forward with, and then that was it. But at the time, I had, you know, I emptied my bank account in the UK, and I'm just converting it in my head into dirhams. It was about 110,000 dirhams. 
half of that went into licensing and set up. <laughs> so I had about 50,000 dirhams to launch the company and it was up to about three years ago. So the first three years, I spent 520 dirhams on marketing. That was it. The rest of it was pure graft, word of mouth, giving free information away, um, all this sort of stuff. I didn't have money, enough money to advertise on social media or to do these sorts of wonderful things like we're doing now with podcasts. So, um, you know, it was a, it was a wonderful experience when I was initially setting it up. Um, looking back at it at the time, oh, it was tough. I was living in a studio with a laptop and that was it. And then we had, uh, we had COVID, uh, 18 months after I set the company up. So I got into a market where no one really knew or no one understood what short lets or holiday homes was then COVID hit. And of course I'm heavily reliant upon travelers and they couldn't, travel but we did very well because people couldn't travel they needed nice homes to stay in and we have a quality product then i had about a year of breathing space where suddenly everyone started knowing what it was but then of course because everyone knew what it was everyone started getting involved in it and now every single person out there is doing short lists so it's been a tough ride i disagree i think if you don't mind i think everyone out there is trying to do short lists i don't think mm. everyone's doing it or everyone is doing it well, correct me if I'm wrong. No, you are definitely not wrong. You're very right. In fact, a few larger players, should we say, have actually shut the departments down and not continued. It, going back to what I was saying, it's by far the hardest thing I've had to do. Yeah. There are so many moving parts. You're selling a property, you get the property on, you put it online, you get the calls, you do the viewings, you negotiate the offer, you exchange a contract or, or complete on the contracts and away you go. I know there's a few things that change. What happens in holiday homes? What wow. happens? We'll get onto that later. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then when you look at what we have to then go through to have it as a bolt on, a company that's already running a brokerage or, or doing whatever they're doing, and they say, oh, short lets. I don't know how many times have I heard it. How hard can it be? It's just dropping a key off. You, your head hits the desk. Yeah. You just sort of think, really, it truly isn't. And I think a few people have got into this thinking it with that mantra and have realized actually it isn't. And this is why I believe AirDXB, and if I can use the word successful, I will, has become successful is because that's all we do. We stick to that discipline. We give it our all. We work hard. We simplify. It's a big word that I shout around. And you've heard me say that a million yeah. times. Simplify it. I don't want five steps. I want three. I don't want to hear paragraphs. I want to hear sentences. Get to the point and move forward. And especially in what we do, and my GM will always say this, is he wishes we had a pause button yeah. just to take breath. You can't. Every day in high season, we're having... 100, 200 people checking in a day. We have well over 100,000 guests come through in total. Um, we are listing properties, of course, cleanings, maintenance, things like that. It does not stop. You are effectively running a very, 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 very large hotel across a city. I'd love to be given a hotel within four walls. I know to run that. <laughs> that would be the dream. I noticed uh, this a little bit of, around when we had um, the bad weather and things that happen here. Mm. You talk about that it never stops. Mm. A real estate transaction, as you say, that can pause. Mm. The buyer and the seller, that, that transaction is still going ahead even if it's a week later. Mm. But the moment that we had the bad weather, you've still got guests that need to get out of these apartments to go to the airport. Guests need to get in the apartments. But in between, mm. we need to get the cleaners mm. there to mm. clean that and any leaks. So as you say, it just, there is no pause button no. to stop that. No, and especially at the volume we're now dealing with, with the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hundreds of properties we have, the hundreds of thousands of guests we see a year, the 200 employees that we have, it's a machine and it has to be so well oiled and so methodical in its approach. It cannot be a bolt on. It cannot be a subdivision. It has to be the leading division because, or company, because it requires so much effort and thought but I love that. I absolutely love that. You don't stop and you don't stop thinking. Because if I stop thinking, I'll be bored. So <laughs> I wish you'd stop sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to say that. You're going to say that. But it's it's a wonderful thing and it tests you. No day's the same. We have good experiences and we have bad experiences. But as long as you learn from both in a positive way and move forward, it's a phenomenal thing to watch something that I had no money to even advertise with turn into something that it has now. It's great. It's fantastic. So I've got two it's, questions. It's, it's like my baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's your baby. It's my baby. Um, so I've got two questions there. One is, how did you get it to be this well-oiled machine? Because obviously that didn't come overnight no. as well. Like, how have you got the people in, the departments in? Like, how has it gone from you in your pants in your studio <laughs> to how many staff I never said I was in my pants, but okay. I'm just, I'm just assuming. <laughs> but you've heard me say that in the past because I know I have. I remember exactly my pants tapping away on your laptop. But yeah. 
Um, you burn yourself out. A lot of people think you're absolutely nuts, and you you were there when I had a certain situation, which I think was a, was a, was a mini stroke, and you know there were there were times that I'll go to bed at I think it was ten, and then wake back up at midnight one to work through till three or four to go to bed, then until six, seven, eight to then wake yeah, up yeah. and then go through and keep going. When you are pushing yourself that hard, my God, do you learn who and what you are? But you then know you're at that point of absolutely breaking. And if you do go down the route of having a stroke or, um, you know, on that cusp of burnout, keep pushing. <laughs> I know it's mad, but then at that point, you know you've given it your all. I, I'm a firm believer in in creating something out of nothing. Don't go and take loans because it's not your money. Don't go and spend whatever money you have. Keep creating, keep creating to that absolute point, And then you start recruiting out methodically now i know there'll be several people that will disagree with that and think you're absolutely nuts but i think if you speak to anyone that can create companies of a certain size a certain stature mm -hmm. you know that e-word they will say the same you have to go through that you have to if you don't if you go and borrow money if you believe that 12 hours or even 13 hours is a long day then you're you'll know you yeah. it will not work unless you come up with that rate that rainbow idea that um light bulb idea where you invent something you you can't make a business worth and bleed for it. And I mean yeah. bleed hard for it. And then don't just do that for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Do that for three, four years. Mm -hmm. Then you will create something. Because the way I look at it, it's like um great analogy. It's like building a, it's like building a boat on the side of a pond. Right? Once you push it into the once you push that boat into the pond, which you're trying to get to the other side, by the way, once it's on its way, you can't do anything. So you've got to make sure that that little boat that you're building, that little model boat that you're pushing to the other side of the pond is built with its absolute best that it can be because once it's let go it's it's on its own so this is what i looked at is doing my absolute to make sure it's constructed in the best possible way then you can start expanding yeah so no water comes in so yeah so no water go back onto the boat analogy yeah build it because once it goes halfway if you haven't built it correctly halfway across that pond it will sink so everything has to go into it to make sure that that business or the little boats is built so well that once you do let it go, and I use that, I'm doing the finger, the air, the air fingers here, I've, not, I've never let that business go, but it is built so well that it will be resilient, right? Um, and so when you form, or when I formed ADXB, it was working that hard to make sure that when, when we grew and when other people came and joined, that it was built and it had a certain stature that it could then continue to grow. And we're growing, was it 10% month on month stock-wise? That's incredible. And no one else is doing it. We were tracking 20, 30 other companies, lead competitors. No one else is performing at that level. Um, and then you've got to make sure you get the right people in to help guide you. So it's not all about you. I love asking questions. I always ask you questions all the time. Why are you doing that? What made you mm -hmm. think this? Da, 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 da. Anyone with an ego doesn't belong at, at in a position of running a company. And if they are running the company, it's going to fail. Um, you're only as good as your staff. I know everybody uses that, but I cannot re-emphasize that more. When we get to the size of the company we are now, I'm a very, very, very small person in that company. There's yeah. a lot more important people in that company, a lot bigger cogs that are moving. Yeah, but I feel like obviously I'm within the company and I see that anyway. Everybody in strong positions within the company all worked to be in that position. Mm. Of, like, you know what I mean? No one kind of hide to come in to do this. Everyone kind of worked hard to get where they are. It, 100 percent So they were all in the trenches and then the yeah. people that they bring in underneath them and that they help grow. They, they know that their manager, their boss, whoever has Could all been through that. And I think that's what makes the company as solid as what it is. Well, exactly. A, not an outsider, but from somebody mm -hmm. that's not in your position, it's mm. nice to see that everybody kind of just knows how hard it has been. Mm. But it's also good because everyone's been in that. I, do you know what I'm trying to say? You can't appreciate the sweet without the sour. Yeah. You've got to get punched several times by Mike Tyson. We don't punch our staff. We don't punch our staff. <laughs> but you have to, in a methodical way, you know, we treat our staff with utmost respect. And I cannot regret that more. The business is only what it is because of the people that we have there. But as a person that's trying to move forward in life, you have to be beaten black and blue, dragged through the fence backwards to then know how to then progress forward. You need to go down to the bottom and wake way up. Guys that we have, girls, guys, everybody, is that they've come in, especially the senior members, and started off on a very or on, on a much lower position, and really had to fill this business out and be beaten black and blue by the business, business. not by me. Make that very mm -hmm. clear. Um, is to how hard it can be. Once you realise the tougher side, then you know how then to build that going forward. 
it's just like what I'm saying, we set up a business. If you're given X amount of money to set up a business, you're never going to appreciate it. Yeah. You only appreciate money when you earn it. And, you know, the business to me, the fact it was something out of nothing means so much more to me than someone giving me X amount of money and then building it. And it wouldn't be what it is now if someone gave me money. It just wouldn't because yeah. your passion isn't there. The people that we have working, especially in the senior management, have come in at that level and have worked their way through the good and the bad to then get to the point and go, okay, right, I'm in for this. I understand how bad this can be and I'm not going back there. It's yeah. exactly the same as my my but, mindset. But I think that's so important from an employee point of view as well because there's not one part of the company that's independent. As you say, the people that are managing guest relations would work with people in the operations because they're out in the field. And then the operation people need to work with a cleaning company because the cleaning company needs to know where they're going to be. Mm. If the property is not cleaned well, mm. then that affects the guest relations team because people are complaining. If you get a bad review, the owner's team will then have the problem because the owners are going to complain. So oh, if, they, if they haven't all worked together and known the trenches in the other areas, then they're never going to respect how hard each other's job Correct. can be yeah. um, and I think you've put that together very well mm. in terms of teams all respect other people's type roles which makes them enjoy I think working for you yeah one hopes but you're absolutely right it, 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 there's it's, it's five or six business within a business you look at the size of these teams the the actual size of them cleaners 50 60 guest relations I think we're 15 now that, if you took, regardless of the job that they do, you put 15 people into a company, you'd walk in there and go, oh, there's 15 people working in the company, it's quite big. That's just one department, yeah. which runs at such a high level, it is its own business. It's crazy, okay, it doesn't have a and l but it runs at its own business, uh, uh, like its own business. And and yeah, it's great for you to say that, and it truly is, but it's, it's testament to the people that we have. And everybody wants to work together. Everybody knows the pain points. If I don't do this, how that reverberates back down the chain and how it affects that person sat over there, is not pleasant. So let's get this right. It's a high, it's a high pressure job. It's tourism at the end of the day. Um, and there is no pause button and the team will know that. And, and what's great about the, the team at the, at the top will know it, but we don't have a team at the top, just like me. You know, I sit in amongst everybody. There's no superiority. There's no ego. There's none of that. And if anyone has an ego, then they're not welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and I am firm with that. Everybody, no one's better than anybody else in, in the position of, um, authority, uh, in the position of, um, um, I'm better than you because I have this badge. Um, you know, we don't do that. Everybody is the same and everyone just does their job. And if everyone does the job to the best of their ability, the company runs. So when I started to work with you, which was a couple three of years, three years, years ago three now, years ago. Um, there was four people in the company at the time. Yeah, we outsourced a we lot. We outsourced a lot. Um, obviously, I then come in, um, we saw the opportunity to bring in the interiors internally mm. tell me about why you started bringing that internally well i was self-taught with interiors which is mad to think <laughs> that i would then i would furnish on behalf owners properties self-taught by walking into ikea and i then late nights i mean we've done a fair few anyway two three in the morning furnishing and just simplifying what is a guest looking for what looks good blah 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 blah, blah. um then I did use an interior designer um, who was very, very good, but the price point wasn't quite where we wanted it to be um, because this is all about making the client as much money as possible. It's all about the net profit in their bank at the end of the year. If we spend all of that money on furnishing that isn't necessarily needed, what's the point? Yeah. Um, we grew methodically. We outsourced cleaning. We outsourced maintenance. I outsourced guest relations staff. I outsourced interiors. I outsourced everything because what I didn't want to do is have the overhead on the business because then that would drain the money out. So incredibly difficult to do because outsourcing is a good idea in some circumstances, not in another, because you, you, you relinquish a lot of authority and power, yeah. not in a bad way, the control. I mean, in a good way, the control. Did you do this? But when you're outsourcing it, laptops go down or someone doesn't necessarily see you in that authoritarian situation. Contradicts what I've just said, but in this point in time, if you're outsourcing, you need to make sure that whoever's working for you knows that, you know, they're working for you. Yeah. One, of the, so, things, sorry, yeah, one sorry. of the things that I noticed on that, it was always around New Year's or Eid breaks. Mm. The outsourced companies that you used to use would say, well, it's Eid, Shut down. so we're off. And it's no. like, well, New Year's Eve, we've got mm. so many check-ins. Hospitality. We need, yeah, it needs to be cleaned. And mm. it was like, no, our cleaners aren't working these days. So. And then you're done. And you've got yeah. 30, 40, at the time, 30, yeah. 40 cleans. Yeah, and they wouldn't even take double pay. Like, mm. obviously, you pay people for the bank holidays that they work, but they mm. were just, we're shut. Yeah, and the big thing is it was quality as well. So if there was a problem with quality, I couldn't go to that person and say, can you sort it? You had to go into the 
manager or the owner and then how that got pushed back down the line I don't know so again I was beaten black and blue I was let down by certain people uh, people didn't conform in, in in ways that they should have done um I remember when I first set up, owners would provide their own linen. I mean, that's like five oh. tons of linen. And then we were outsourcing the cleaning for that. I mean, just the moving parts. I mean, it's great to look back on it and smile. See the smile? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's great It's great to look back at this because that's then what gave the absolute discipline because you knew how bad it could be to make sure you never went back there. Yeah. Yeah. So you have that, and I'm a true believer in that. I like to feel the pain. If I feel that... And I know that I never want to go back to it. And that in itself is your motivation to never go back to it. So um, when when I went through these situations, I'm thinking about it now, all these different moving parts, it's crazy to think that the business even kept going. But that's that's resilience. You know, that is, I will make it work. And, and, and we did. Um, my approach into this market was more numbers driven, statistics, working with agents. It was more that side. And that's what really solidified Air DXB to then grow, to then we could bring these resources in-house. But do I regret it? Absolutely not. And I still stand by it. If I didn't go through those pain points, then I would not be as respectful, I believe, as what I have now. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite part of the business? Favorite part. Let's just get back onto interiors. Sorry, Sorry. Could you ask me a question about that? Sorry, we've gone off on a bit of a tangent. So then I brought interiors in, you came and joined, and then you at that point, let's be honest, didn't have an interior design experience. No. And then we worked together. Yeah. And then you grew phenomenally so quick into creating some phenomenal properties yeah. and you've done what was it five six hundred now in three years yeah so you Crazy. started and it was the interior designer just couldn't do a property that came on and the owner mm. was like i need it furnishing now. and now so i was mm. like i can give it a go yeah. um and then i said i'm only doing one just doing one that's it <laughs> and then another one kind of crept in and i was like okay i'll do another one and then it just yeah i'd say spiraled but in a very good way other than mm. you know the long nights the doing two jobs at once. Um, but self-taught is a, is, a, is a phenomenal experience as well. Yeah. And then, to, again, the, not only the discipline side of it, but to the how you feel within yourself that you've created something like that gives you that, that step to move on. But the fact that you did it right, and look what it grew into, look yeah. how much you've moved out. What's your department now, 15 people? Yeah, yeah, yeah about around how 15. Many, how many designers, six, seven? Six, um, but on different, obviously, because we've got the wrap designers, we've got the renovation designers, yeah, it's all it's different just, things. Just... But I look again, I love it because if any of the like junior designers come in and they're like, mm. Oh, I can't, this is hard, and I'm like, That is not hard. That's that not, not hard. hard. And no, I'm going to tell you exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Anyone comes to me in this company and says, I can't, or this won't work. This is just, just winding back, following from your saying, what I love about this is I know every single part of this business because yeah. I've done it. And I know how it works. Yes, we've refined the processes. So if anyone comes to me and says, uh, but no, 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 this is how it's done. Yeah. If you need to roll your sleeves up, do it. Exactly the same with you. Yeah. I love it now because we're at a position that we are, we brought in designers that now teach me. Mm. Again, these new people come in and they can do a lot, a lot more than what I could offer. So even looking from the beginning, which everything was good to what we churn out now is phenomenal mm. um, and just having that value for money mantra in their head and all this stuff it's just nice as you say from edxb from day one to what it is now it's mm. nice to have seen it grow over 100%. the years um, and just streamlining the fact that you then brought in after the interiors i know that you'll follow on from this is from interiors we had pain points that we was outsourcing handymen to put up pictures right. and paint walls mm. so to get rid of that problem for me you then brought in handyman Handyman. team and maintenance and then the cleaners would come and they wouldn't make the beds how we liked it for the photos so then bring in the cleaning company we had that control and we could train them how we like the beds made how we liked the knife and forks to be down for the photos it just you took away all the headaches but only once you got to a point of yeah breaking this sounds awful so don't take it literally whoever's listening to this but that point of I can't physically do anymore. Okay, then let's go to it. Yeah. So you never had a luxury of being gifted it first no. to then pull back. You were constantly being pushed forward to the point of, I can't physically without this. I can't. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Okay, I've got it. Bang. Yeah. And that's how we've grown into this machine now yeah, and think- moved at the pace that we have moved in, you think, six years with no one knowing what Charlotte's is to COVID to now our biggest competitor, which I've always said is long term because of course the rates have come up so it's decreasing the 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 amount of money that you can get between the two it's been brutal but the way that this company has developed is phenomenal 
um, and I, I'm speaking about the team here, and it's not about Greg, of course, but is amazing. You look at what you've done. You've gone from you learning from me, who was self-taught, and you, you were self-teaching as well, to 15. Yeah. And now you're a 20, 30, 40 projects a week being signed up. Yeah. Well, yeah, about, about that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was doing 15 alone back then, and even then it was a lot for, as you say, a new market mm. because holiday homes weren't offering furnishing mm. back then. We, we were one of the first to do that, and then in the way that we did it in the value for money and the processes that we that we brought in to now having a lot more come through and the level that they are and the designers that work on like these talent that's working on these properties mm. and a lot of people don't put that into a holiday home they go it's a holiday home just i care oh. it we don't do that we, we don't we do something that, that the owner is proud of at the end well this well, this is what i've always said is don't don't just go and do the bare minimum because um, when guests are booking a property, and I've said this a million times, and I know I've said it on this podcast, we heard the terminology, a picture speaks a thousand words. What we do, a picture speaks a million words. Guests don't read descriptions. Uh -uh. They look at the pretty pictures. This is why we have 60, 70, 80 pictures online to really demonstrate what this property is about. It helps us with algorithm boosts and all this sort of stuff, which we'll talk about another day. But um, you need to make sure that what you're putting in is correct because you're demonstrating then to the owner that you as a host have been very methodical and very passionate about producing a very nice property. So that's yeah. telling the guest what a lovely person you are. That's and right. so by spending a little bit more, you're getting a lot more. This market's gone from 4,000 give or take properties six years ago, available short let properties in Dubai, to around 25,000. Your competition is up five, six, seven hundred percent. So you've really, really, really got to have a very well-tuned product at a competitive Pay price, price. Yeah. which we've now, I believe, almost got to a T, but there's always room to progress. Yeah. And this is, you know, a lot to do with what you've managed to, to to seek, find out. And also you've been through the pain points. I remember when you were outsourcing certain things and you pain. were you yeah, but now you don't see it as a luxury, the fact that we insource, you see it as a privilege. Yeah. Which makes you respect every team. As you mm. say, we we the day we started we didn't have handyman teams, cleaners and this. Mm. We had the pain points of these outsource companies. So now we have our own team. We are a team. Mm. Everyone within our team works so closely together. They all respect each other because they all need each other to do their job. Yeah. Correct. It's quite yeah. smooth. Correct. And you have to because there's so many moving parts. And if we're reaching for the stars, which we are, and having quarter of a million guests come through our books a year, which why not? Why can't we do that in the next twelve months? We really need a very, very well oiled machine and yeah. we can keep growing. You know, there are talks about us potentially going global. At the moment, my eyes are firmly on Dubai. It's working well for us. I enjoy the business that we have. Why take your eye off the ball? Yeah, there's a lot of people that do that. They're going off on tangents and do other things and they wonder why their immediate business isn't working. It's because they're trying to do too many things. But yeah. you look at what we've got, the people that we've got, it's a very, very good company. Yeah. It's a good company. And you look at our retention rate. I think, I think people that have walked away from the company in six years voluntarily without me having to say thank you but no thank you is six six people in six years one a year averages out it's nothing yeah. you know our staff attention is phenomenal and that isn't due to greg it's due to the phenomenal teams team leaders managers you know people that we have in tow so um yeah it's uh it's hard work but you're getting there and you've got there mm -hmm. so why do you do it like you're, the, the business uh, is at a place that you are, <laughs> it's successful. You've got these other, yeah. why do you continue to do it? I have to, you, the, the, the big part of owning, the worst thing you can do when you run a business or be, do anything is like, well, the worst thing you do in life is lie to yourself. You've got to know who you are. And I think I'm a firm believer as well, that if you are, if you're passionate about what you're doing and you firmly believe and you know, I used to read these things, hear these things, oh, you've got to believe in yourself and if you're passionate and you just go, yes, I am passionate. I never knew what that was until Edixby started. The amount of pre-businesses, I was like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in and I genuinely thought I was but that was my that was my mouth, not my heart. Edixby truly is because it's something which at the time of setting up, I did hit rock bottom to know how important this was and work so hard to then produce this. Um that the passion is there so it's it's to take that away you, you can't it will never go and i will never ever give up not doing something because it's just the way that one is built and to find then something that you're truly embedded in is phenomenal it isn't just a job it isn't someone waking up in the morning jumping onto tiktok or whatever videotaping themselves going, yeah today's a great day and i'm going to beat my target anyone can say that till you bleed 
or put yourself into a very, very difficult, even dark situations like I did with my health and stuff, you don't know how committed you are to that company. Do that, and then then you wear that badge of honor. With AirDXB, I've done that. It's something embedded. It's in my veins. So it's going to be very, 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 very hard to ever let it go. Do you think it's like an abusive relationship? It just keeps hitting you and you're like, I'm coming back and we're going to keep That's my baby you're you. talking about. It's not abusive. Um, I think look, it's testing and it's pushing. The lovely thing is it's always evolving. So I'm always out of my comfort zone, which I love. Challenged. And you, you hear me say so many times, I'm always challenged. I hate being in my comfort zone. I hate waking up knowing what's going to happen that day. It's not nothing bad, bad happens, but I'm constantly evolving the business and it's moving. So it's like, oh, right, if I do that, what's going to happen? Okay, we're moving, we're rolling. Right, then go and do that. And you're building it. It's keeping my mind ticking. We, I've, I've relinqu- I have I've, relinquished a lot of authority very easily, but it's because I knew I had the right people. Yeah. And the people that I have are better than me in these certain positions. You always recruit better than you. Yes, they come for advice. And yes, we put our heads together, but their, their passion into certain parts of this business is demonstrated and can be better than mine. Yeah. contradicts what I've just said, but I'm talking about all encompassing the business because we it's so large now, it's hard to get stuck into certain parts 100% passionately, but we yeah. found people that have. So relinquishing certain parts of this business and authority and letting people do what they want to do actually came a lot easier because I've got the right people with me. Yeah. They know how and what this company means to me and to everyone else, the other two employees that work there, that they do get that right. Um, and it's an amazing thing to see. And there was no way I could have built this company to what it is now physically couldn't because there's not time of the day but also different attitudes different mindsets different personas different thought processes that i can't think i will think a certain way and that got me to a certain point but by bringing in these other people they're 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 building this in the in the right way i i see a lot of your why though and i've heard you say it is the responsibility of having all these staff work oh yeah and and it, (laughs) it, it is in a positive way and i think it does it, that does filter down. I don't. I've never really heard you say this. Well, I haven't heard you say this to staff, but I know that in your heart, these are your responsibility, and the fact mm. that they work for you, you want to be successful to keep the business going for them. You've mentioned that a few times to yeah. me. Like these people have got families. These people are have, having children, and they're putting their children through school and this. And to keep this business successful and grow allows these teams to grow correct and there's a few that have come to me and said there's no way and this is not the greg lewis show even though i'm the host of this podcast (laughs) is that we've got people that have said if i stayed where i was or if i was within a company i wouldn't have this path because you've given us and relinquished a lot of 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 um responsibilities and my immediate response to that is if you're not capable of doing it then you don't belong in this company yeah. so it's credit to you <laughs> very much into if you're not good enough then you shouldn't be here if you're not in a position to be able to take on more responsibilities and grow why are you here if if i can't do what you're doing or if i can do what you're doing why am i paying you to do it so the people that we have in have been given this um and they work for it so it's yeah. not given free it's given in a very positive way this path of like make it your own yeah you know go for it here's some guidelines don't go and spend two million dollars <laughs> on <laughs> facebook advertisement or something but go and do what go and do what you want to do because you are recruited for a reason you're recruited in because i don't have the capability i don't have the knowledge i don't have the understanding so who am i then to come back and tell you what to do i'm not go and this is what we've now built and this is what we've created so but there are times that i pause and i'm stupid to do this where i think there's 200 people relying on me because this is the big thing as well these are fixed salaries right yeah, uh, you know this is not a real estate company that's on commission only and you pay seven and a half thousand dirhams or give or take for a broker card and then that's it oh yes okay it's a bit of property finder but you can divide that on a PL list blah 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 these are fixed costs yeah, this is millions and millions and millions of dollars I'm paying a year in staff. And I'm doing it now. I'm thinking about it. And you start thinking, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but just get on with it. But, but we've got the right people to keep it going. And as long as the right direction is there, and this goes back to your point, would you relinquish it? Then there comes a part of me that can't. And I'm going to say it's the most positive way that I can, but because I can offer that guidance. If I pull back, someone may go off on a slight tangent and that may be detrimental to the other parts of the business. Um, so I'll never let it go because it's my baby. I'll never let it go because I believe there's a part for me in this company to make sure it's going in the right direction. Um, but I know that this is not something I can do by myself. So it's great to make sure, well, it's great to see that we've got the right people around us and I have to make sure that we have the right people around us. And then when it comes to salary day, you just go, okay. Yeah. Oh no. (laughs) Move on quick. (laughs) Um, But look, it it was my choice to build it the way that we have and credit to all all the team. And, 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 you know, you look at the figures, I don't think there's anyone beating us out there. So. 
Well, it's, it's to scale, though, isn't it? As you say, you've got mm. these 200 staff. It's not like the portfolio hasn't grown with the staff. A hundred percent. We are never, we are never in a luck, a luck, a luck. We're, we're never, we're never entitled. We're not entitled business that believes we should have this because we're going to grow. We've got this size. We're never in a, a, a place of luxury because we are oversubscribed with this. We're always, we're not a breaking point, but we're always close to it. Then we will take the next step. Yeah. So I'm, you know, it was detrimental to the firm if I go out and spend willy nilly. And I, oh, I went down this tangent and I thought it would be a really good idea to invest half a million dollars into this enterprise. Oh, it went wrong. Oh, I can't pay you at the end of this month. Yeah. That's not what AirDXB is about. It's focused and it's it's controlled and it's um, built around growing the business in that way, but making sure that we're not overspending to make sure that the staff are always cocooned and looked after. And so they should be. So more questions. Mm. Um, short term, you seem like it's you've nailed that in terms of you have <laughs> you have um <laughs> as you say growing month on month what about these other departments of search because obviously there's so yeah. much new things happening in the last 12 months yeah 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 so it goes on to what you were just saying we we let's talk about you let's talk about interiors we found ourselves needing maintenance we want maintenance and that happens when you run portfolios of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties you need your own maintenance team wrapping we're outsourcing a lot of wrapping we're spending 25, 30, 40,000 dirhams a week on wrapping. Why are we outsourcing that? Why not bring it internally? We brought that internally to deal with our demand. But then why cocoon that around AirDXB? Why don't we go out to the open market and say, do you know what? We are a company. Yes, there's other wrapping companies out there. Um, but this is what we do. This is the products that we've produced. You know, it's not our sole business. So we're not going to penny pinch and demand high prices. We can be a bit more competitive. Um, we can offer more because we have them, that we have Ed XB as a machine behind supporting that. We've done now the same at brokerage. I advised on over seven, what was it, 76 deals last year alone. Didn't take a cent of the commission because we work with brokers. Um, brokers can use us to produce these um, reports. Uh, they can then demonstrate, show those to their, their, their prospective buyers. The buyers then see these reports showing these great returns. They just use the buy. The buyer gets the commission. We get a property to then manage. Um, what we're now doing is still working with the brokers very much, but what we've got is a very large uh, portfolio of buyers and sellers. Um, so we're now helping and assisting them working with other brokers um, because we've grown to that size now. Um, we also have the renovations department. I mean, we've got, I don't know, 10, 10 11, 12 I think, projects on at the moment, yeah. um, whether that's from knocking down kitchen walls up to renovating villas. It's then the internal demand which then created that demand. Yeah. So then why outsource it? Create our own company. And then we can not only deal with the internal demand, we can then go out to the further market. So we've now got what is now four companies. So AirDXB, the main management company, we then have the wrapping company, we have the interiors uh, company, which then forms your renovation. Then of course we have the brokerage as well. So it's it's coming, and I hate the terminology, but that one-stop shop, it isn't because everything is treated as its own individual company. Yeah. What we don't want to do is give it a half approach. Now, just what I said earlier, part of this podcast is I think people fail when it just becomes a bolt on. We've gone completely opposite way from everybody else, which is uber exciting because I'm going to set up a short let company and said, okay, let's get into these different sectors. Um, and I like it. We've got the right people in, we've got experienced people in um, and we're methodically growing it. I'm not banging my fist on the, on the table saying I need to see profit in this time and I need this, I need that. We're okay. Just do it right. You know, yeah. let the reputation take the market. You know, we don't, we're not here today. We want to be here tomorrow. So it's great to see that we're growing that way as well, but slowly, gently, steady as she goes, rather than let's go and recruit an X amount more employees and, you know, look at me, I've got a really big company and all this sort of stuff, which is not what I want. No, and that happens a lot in Dubai. Not. With the interiors, um, that natural growth, as you say, we did only holiday homes for around 400 properties. Mm before we went out to the market and that came naturally. We never said, oh, we're nailing holiday homes. Let's go and furnish other properties. It was mm. these holiday home owners saying, we really like what you did on this holiday home. Can right. you get us this sofa? Can you get us this? Yeah. Can you get us that? Can and you then, come do my own home? Can you come and do my own yeah. home? Can you come and do my long-term home? Mm. There was all these different areas that they wanted us to help them with. And once we started doing more and more of those, that's when we said, actually, we've there is the demand from the reputation right. because they know that we will do it right. Correct. Let's get in these experienced designers and um, so forth. With short term, I'm quite confident we're aiming for number one and we will be here in terms of what we are already number one in terms of the growth of the level of stock that we're taking on. Do you, are you planning to have 
the other departments are you i know that we're not pushing them right now to be the most profitable but do you see them all going for gold as such well, the or people, they're going to be more boutique -y? well the people that are running it will say they want to go for gold <laughs> and this is why it's about getting the right people in and carving that path with parameters and said okay let's move methodically respecting the other businesses it's not just i'm going off on this and it might be detrimental to other parts because now it comes a bit of a juggling act and again this is why i don't you know this is why i love the company because it's challenging me but also i'm finding myself leaning a bit more into this now because we've got some phenomenal people dealing with the management side of how do these other companies support each other as well as the main mothership which is AirDXB. um we can't lose sight of AirDXB. i mean our numbers are fantastic 94 percent average occupancy um are um main principles will all be based around making sure that the air dxb management portfolio is dealt with as it always has been since yeah. day one we retain figures like the 94 percent so that will be dealt with accordingly these other businesses they must turn a profit any business must turn a profit but it's a methodical way of doing it it's not this is my savings or i've got three business partners i'm, the, I'm i am actually the sole owner of air dxb i haven't got other people wanting a slice of the pie. I haven't got other people's opinions at that higher level, which I've seen it happen before. I spend three weeks arguing, nothing's been done, you've lost that time. So from the perspective of these businesses, as long as we've got the right people in who are methodically thinking it through, then the AdXB management, which will always be our core business and have all our attention. It yeah. will, it has to, that's yeah. who and what we are. These businesses will grow accordingly. And if they accelerate and, and wish to reach for the stars, as long as it is correct and the, the line of thinking is correct, then absolutely we'll push that. Um, and with AirDXB, we are ref always refining processes, but we've got some very talented people there now. And they're doing figures that I, you know, I don't know anyone is globally. You know, I've got friends over in the UK, I've got friends over in America. And so how many properties are you listing for argument's sake a month? Nowhere near us. Uh, the yeah. 25 properties that we're tracking, 25 companies we're tracking, nowhere near us. Um, we are... We are a company which is trying to simplify as much as it can. We're, we've got several USPs, um, which other companies aren't doing. That's testament, and, and, and sorry, the company, uh, they are playing testament to the company because it's shown how our growth mm -hmm. has, has demanded. We need to get that in line with these other companies, um, why, which we will, we will get there. Why, just touching on something you just mentioned, why didn't you have partners? Why didn't you go into business with others? And why haven't you bid or taken investment to expand the company quick like these other companies do where they get oh here's a few million injection to boost yeah, why so have funding. you solely done it on your own um, I don't I don't want to sit in a boardroom sat around spreadsheets talking about money mad because I run a business I ask for the bottom line I want sentences not paragraphs I want straight to the point fact information I'll digest it get on with it other people that come will want a 16 page report about the same other people that will come will say I want a larger slice of the profit I didn't take any money out of this company for the first four years apart from a very small salary 20 grand 15 20 grand when I first started the first two or three years I didn't I lived off savings and I've got my overheads down so I think it was just over 6,000 dirhams including rent and I lived off that for a year two years so I don't want people coming in with different attitudes towards it at this high, at this senior level yeah. that would slow down AirDXB. Although we have grown significantly, we haven't grown if we as quick as if we had a $2 million investment. I've been offered $10, $15 million. That was my last offer. And that was three, four years ago. That was a, a very small piece of, of the business. So what, what that would be now and what have you, but I won't get into that because that's not where my head's at. It's not an ego trip for me. Is that... If I, if I went down that route, then I'd have someone that's got $10, $15 million invested in the company asking all sorts of questions, then slowing this down. Then why are you doing that? Why did, well, blah, 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 it goes on and on, on. Let me do my job. Let me go and get my fingers and my hands and my body and everything stuck into this in the trenches with my sleeves rolled up to make this work. I've got friends who have partners and all I hear is the arguments. Not about deals they've done, not about the growth plans. It's that he wanted this, then he took this time off and then he said he wanted that. I want none of it. I want sim I want I want things simple and I want things done quickly and methodically. And it, you've heard me say this, uh, chefs at the pot, another analogy. You bring yeah. too many chefs to the pot, it all goes wrong. You start running business partners, it does. Now it was going back onto to, to one of the points just raised there, why didn't you take initial investment? Could it expediated? Yes. But it goes back to the first ever point that we raised. You went out on your own why because I wanted to do it my way. Yeah. I didn't want someone else's money 
to then have to answer to them, to feel indebted to them, to then spend time producing more and more reports and having a meeting about a meeting for them to tell them why I've decided to deviate this way, which I'm doing all right at the moment. These ideas seem to be working. And also, why have someone else's money? Don't feel, don't be entitled, and wrong terminology, but I've used this before. I've got someone else's money, so I'm going to go and spend it this way. Yeah. I earned the money that we have when we're investing. So there's a lot more thought that goes into where it goes. I'm not sat back going, I've got $2 million in the bank so I can do what I want to do and have that almost, entitlement's the wrong word, but uh, that relaxed attitude and also that luxury. I yeah. want to permanently feel that my bank balance is about to hit zero. Then you permanently will keep moving forward in, you know, in, a, in what I believe is the right way. So to clarify, it's not. Sorry? <laughs> to clarify, the bank balance is not about to hit zero. Is, no, it's not that? about to hit zero. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm constantly waking up thinking back to those days. And this is the beauty of AirDXB and the way I started it. I was in such, um, I was such a place where there was nothing. I can easily think back to where that was and I'm not going back there. Yeah. So that keeps you going. If there's $2 million in the bank, all right, let's go and get that. Let's go and buy this. Let's go and do that. Doesn't it come back to the boat? on the edge. I feel like that comes back to the boat. So mm. you've got your boat and you've put every plank and every nail into that boat so you mm. know it's been done properly. If you brought in a partner and they took care of the left side of the boat, how do you know mm. that it's that it's level and it's moving the way that you want it to. And he'll blame me when it goes wrong and it sinks. It's all this sort of stuff. It's on my shoulders and it's a hell of responsibility, but at least this way, and you've got to back yourself. Am I the right person to make the right decisions? Is this idea going to work? Are you committed enough? Are you going to burn yourself out three times in a row before you even start considering getting in staff? Great thing is I have. I've seen other people that haven't. That's not because I'm any better. It's more the fact that I, I need and want this. I have to have it. So keeps you going. Keeps you going. So what is next? <laughs> Get, getting these other three businesses up and running, which is absolutely right. We're, we we will hit over a thousand properties this year. Um, I keep, keep, what's next is keeping, keeping where you are in the sense of mindset. Don't, go off on tangents which is very easy to do when you get to a certain size keep focused keep knowing that the direction that you're going in is correct keep building what we're doing and refining it because our percentage of growth has never been as high as it is now the volume of stock has never yeah. been as high as it is now the volume of interior projects never as it is now we are moving in such a credible location when we are and we are in the hardest time i've ever had edX but yes it's only six years but when you look at the things that we've had to go through now is the hardest part with long-term rentals doing what it's doing coming up significantly a lot of investors are challenging why short let this is the hardest part of this company including covid when you couldn't fly in the sky that I've ever had in this company, but it's the fastest growth <laughs> and the the that we've ever had. It's the most interior projects we've ever had. It's the most wrapping projects we've ever had. If we can perform this way in the toughest time we've ever had, when the market cools or if this market drops because inevitably it will because there are cycles, we've not only got through, no one knew what we do, to COVID where no one could fly, to having major competition like long-term well, we're, we're going to go somewhere, but it's about keeping that focus to make sure we don't wobble in these tough times. That in itself takes a lot of brain power, takes a lot of time because it's very easy to freak out and jump to another solution or think you have another solution or go down another path. Stick to what you've done, keep refining that, keep moving that forward. And the fact that we're doing it now with the team that I've got is phenomenal testament to the company's credibility and how we're performing. So you've just said with oh, your biggest challenge now is sometimes owners are saying with long term why short let mm. why short let in a market yeah. as of in the market yeah, yeah, we're in yeah. now why short let we are still making more than long term but it's not the significant forty percent more some places we are there's a couple of studios out in I think it's Jebel Ali where we're making like hundred percent more than what they would have got your marinas your downtowns your palms that forty percent is no longer there in some cases it's ten fifteen twenty percent sometimes a bit more. All comes down to when you bought it. Someone that bought this at uh, the back end of COVID will still be making a significant return. In comparison, though, to long term, that has obviously dropped down. Now, the the the, the main USPs of, of of short term is if you're looking to sell. Now, a lot of people have bought with a with a you know an idea to sell to capitalize on 10 15 20 percent growth year on year you've also looking at the unrest in the region that doesn't seem to be you know um, um uh, lessening in any way it all seems that sadly 
be gathering more momentum. So anything could happen. It may mean that you need to release that property and sell it. Selling a property which is chain free, nobody in it, no long term tenant, no notices to serve, anything like that is a lot more saleable and of a higher value. I've done properties and sold properties for I think one was 16% more than the asking price because someone could move in immediately. Um, that happened after the Russia uh, Ukraine situation. Um, anything like that can happen again when there's an influx of people that need property immediately and they're going to pay more for that property. Yeah. We've seen already. This yeah, isn't yeah. just me making it up. If you need to sell because the situation within the region becomes worse, sadly, people may wish to sell quickly. You're going to sell a property vacant more quickly. Your personal situation may change that you need to move into. We've got three owners all moving into there as their personal situation's changed. So they have that flexibility. However, they would have burnt through a lot more money if they would have had to go and rent somewhere for six months or go to a hotel accommodation, they can move straight in. Family and friends that are visiting, when you look at how much you're paying for a hotel, 1,000 dirhams a night in JBR, they come over two weeks, it's 14,000 dirhams. That's yeah. saved by staying in yours. Um, you look at these different USPs that, that short let offers over long term, long term can't compete. You're giving your property to somebody else and you are restricted with notice periods and things like that. Yeah. So in a market where there's a little bit of unrest within the region, in a market that has accelerated so quickly, you'll find people cashing in, retain an empty property because that will add value to that asset when you come around to selling it, whether that's monetary, whether that's money, yeah. or whether that's value in the sense that you can offload that property more quickly. Um, um, but the big thing is, is you're opening up also to a, every single type of buyer. If you go for someone with a long-term tenant, 99% of the people that would consider it are investors. If your property is vacant, you've got end users, you've got people that want to use it as their own holiday home, you've got people that want to use it for short let, you want people that use it for long-term, you're opening that right up. And I do see it, and it pains me, probably the reason why we're looking at opening our own broker or have opened our own brokerage, mm -hmm. is the amount of properties that are now selling at these premiums because they're vacant now is so much more significant than other properties that have the long-term tenants in where people were saying, I don't want it. I've considered buying, you've considered buying. Yeah. We've told the agent, absolutely, categorically not, not interested in property with a long-term tenant. Yeah. That's us out of that market. So yeah. keeping that going is the thing to do. The other thing is, well, we move the market. If gaming should open in Dubai, who knows, yeah. the tourist market's gonna fly. That means rates are only gonna go up. You move with the market up and down which is correct, which is fantastic rather. Long term, you don't. Long term, you are in line with the rear index and so you are dictated to. So there are positives that can happen within this market to keep pushing those rental returns up for that short let market. Um, I think we're going through a transition now. We were, it seems to have picked up, but I think it's dropping again where a lot of people have come of open companies or short letting themselves. They're realizing how tough it is. They're realizing that the market wasn't what it was. We're now seeing a general decrease in stock. We're now seeing a general decrease in companies that are offering management services. Yeah. It's a matter of time because that before your rates pick up, why? Supply and demand. The least amount or the less amount of properties in the market mean with a consistent demand means your price is only going to go up. Yeah. So I love it. I mean, I've got properties in Dubai. I'd never go into long term. I want control. I don't want someone dictating to me. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm ever going to need to sell it. To me, having control and selling a property for 200 grand more, 300 grand more, because I can sell it now, than making an extra five, 10,000 dirhams a year on long term, there is no competition. No. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you, you, you know, you're not even talking about situations the long term. Tenant doesn't move out. You then got to go through Dubai courts. They trash the property. There's all this sort of thing that can be factored in, where people say it's a gamble short term. I think it's more a gamble with long. You've relinquished full control oh, yeah. for a minimum of two years. How many owners do we have, or I've seen in my career, of saying, "I need the money. I'm going through a divorce. We can't get in. Why? The the the, the long term tenant just won't let me in. Yeah, won't let me do viewings. Well, how, how long? How much longer there for? Six months. And buyer after buyer just walks away, walks away, walks yeah. away, walks away, walks away. So. It's 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 all comes down to you and what you want. Some people are just green eyed. I just want the money. It can make me an extra one percent. That's what I want. Great for me and the clientele we work with. That's one less property in short net, which means more chance of them receiving more money. Answered all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's that's the short let journey so far. But watch this space. Obviously, there's lots of things change, and we hopefully have a phenomenal announcement in the next couple of months which will be something the city has not seen before so watch this space um we're incredibly excited about that and we're still building, building the team we're still growing exponentially month on month with stock and and, and net income etc so future the future at the moment is looking positive i think we should do we this again in a few granted. months time and yes. see what is new and touch more mm. on the other departments no agreed. Um, and see how they're growing for sure yeah agreed so any other questions 
Is that it? That, that's what I could think <laughs> of. <laughs> it's really all you could think of. All right. But look, thank you very much, everybody. And thank you, Leanne, for taking time to come and talk to me and let me talk, which is always nice to do. It's always hard with me to let anyone talk. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it's very true. Well done for you for asking a question letting me this talk. This is a first for me, not just it. for you. <laughs> oh, no. Agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. So thank you very much. Thank anyway, you. everybody take care. Thank you.